at the request of my granddaughter. One of her favorites. It's an easy, sweet treat. Makes a lot. You can either share it, they freeze well, but just enjoy them. So they are called Snickerdoodle Cookies. I'm going to be using a KitchenAid mixer today. I'm very fortunate to have one of these. For many years, I used a hand mixer that you would plug in or a wooden spoon or a fork. As long as you can mix it up, um, you'll have beautiful cookies. But for ease today, this is what we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creaming the butter. And what I did is I pre-measured it just so we could move it along. So there's one cup of butter and it's softened. It's quite warm in my house, so it will mix well. And we're gonna add the sugar. You want the sugar and the butter to really mix well together. So if um, the students are making this and they want to soften their butter, you would suggest pulling it out of the fridge and leaving it on the counter for a few hours? Yes, it's much better at room temperature because um, once you're creaming it, then the sugar is gonna get right into the butter and you'll have a very nice consistency of a cookie. So I'll just scrape that. So we have one cup of softened butter, room temperature. And if the if they don't have butter and they have margarine? Margarine works perfectly. Okay. I often use uh, margarine or butter, I'll interchange them. Okay. And then I've measured one and a half cups of white sugar. So how much butter did you put in? I put in one cup softened butter. Okay and one and a half cups of sugar. Okay, so I'm um, just gonna lock this. I'm gonna add it slowly and I'm gonna have the machine on stir. So if you do have a KitchenAid, they have different attachments. There's a dough hook, there's a whisk, and this is what is called a paddle. And this is what you would use to cream your butter and sugar together. Correct, and you can see it's already starting to mix in, but we want this really creamy and the sugar to be um, mixed right in with the butter. If you were doing this by hand, it would take you four or five minutes to get the right texture, but with the machine, it does go a lot quicker. But we'll leave this go for a moment. And then, <clears throat> The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two eggs and I always like to crack them in a bowl first instead of cracking them right in because sometimes you get a little bit of shell. That's not a good thing in a cookie. We like them crunchy but not with shells. There's our first one. There's our second one. So if you want to take a look, you can see how nice it's starting to whip up. So we're going to add the eggs. Baking is a really great way to stretch your budget. So why don't we chat about that a little bit? Oh, sure. Um, I've baked for years, many times out of necessity. Um, I would only go to the city once a week, but I always had the staples on hand so I could make breads or cakes or cookies um, that would complement some of your dinners that you were able to prepare. Or lunchtime snacks or breakfast. Yeah, it made uh, very good snacks for kids to go to school, come home from school. They were healthier, you can control the sugar. Um, so we would have anything from blueberry muffins to a uh, cake that was called a wacky cake. We'll have to do that one day because you mix it all in one pan. And it was a recipe that was created during the Depression, so in the 40s, when ingredients were scarce. We've got our eggs, butter and sugar. I'd like you to take a look how nicely that's come up. So even if you were mixing it by hand, this is the consistency That's, that you would like to see. Yes, so for your butter and sugar, you want it nicely whipped like that. So you, you mentioned when you would go to town only maybe once a week or once every few weeks. So did you want to explain to our students where you live? Yes, so I live um, 30 minutes from the city center. I live in the township of Oliver Papoonge. Um, in the geographic township of Papoonge. 
An interesting fact, Papunt means winter in Ojibwe, and today it truly is winter. It is minus 27 below, with a howling wind to make it closer to minus 40. But it's nice and cozy in here. I do have um, a form of wood heat um, that keeps the house toasty as well. So now that we've got our butter and sugar and eggs, we're gonna take some vanilla. And I was lucky enough to get this from the island of St. Martin. So it's uh, pure local vanilla. We're gonna add two teaspoons. So you can use a teaspoon, the smaller of your cutlery set, which I often do, or you can use the proper measurement. And this one is on a sliding scale. So it would be two of these. And how did you learn to bake? Um, well, from my mom and by reading cookbooks and trial and error. Some things I made were good and some things not so good. <clears throat> so we haven't introduced um, our our guest today. It's um, Lorna Veal, who's actually my mom. Hey. And, uh, and I'm Jenny Veal, the Student Life Coordinator with the English Language Center. And Lorna was an avid volunteer in person and would often meet students at festivals and um, different yeah, events going like on. Kayaking and canoeing, uh, sailing. It's uh, the Italian festival. Many wonderful opportunities in the city of Thunder Bay. So, so today she wanted to share with you her love for baking. I have measured out two and three quarter cups of flour. That's just a regular all purpose white flour. And um, by measuring out I have a, a nesting of measuring cups. So this would be one cup. And you can tell what all of the cups are because there's um, a light indent on them. So this is one cup. This would be three quarters of a cup. So if you know your fractions, you'll be using them when you're learning how to bake. So growing up, one of the things that we used to get almost every birthday was a cake and uh, my mom would take tin foil and wrap um, quarters and dimes and nickels and mix it in the cake. And then when we would get a piece, you'd get to keep whatever money was in the cake. That was a really big treat growing up. So I've added half of the flour and we're mixing it in now. Um, and with Jenny's reference to the birthday cakes, we had a birthday party here one time and there was money in the cake. There was one young boy, he would have been maybe seven years old. He ate so much cake, he almost made himself sick because he was looking for money in the cake. <laughs> and because things were tight, there were only a few quarters, but lots of nickels and dimes. So five cents and 10 cents, with 25 cents being the big prize. So I'm gonna, just to add the rest of the flour, you can see how nice and creamy it's coming. So you only added about half the flour? I did about half, yes. And why would that be? We would have had flour all over the kitchen had, okay. I, had I put it all in at once. Um, I've had many disasters in the kitchen. Uh, everything from things either boiling over, burning, or uh, exploding with the flour. Yeah. But it all makes it part of it. And each time you do something, you learn something. So you get a little better along the way. So I'm just gonna add the rest of the flour. And then <clears throat> start the mixer for that. So you can see. So I'm locking it here on the side. And we have a control of up to 10 but I just put it on the stir. And you can see even that little bit started to come over, but it's mixing in quite nice. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is not usually in cookies, but it adds a real nice tanginess as well as a leavening agent. So it helps them puff up a little bit in the oven. So different leavening agents you might notice in uh, recipes would be baking powder, baking soda, cream of tartar, 
eggs actually act, yes. um, act as a leavening agent as well. And then of course, when you're making breads, you would have your different kinds of yeasts. Right, so I put in one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. And then for more leavening, baking soda. And we only need half a teaspoon of that. Sprinkle it in. And we also need some salt. So our next ingredient is just a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna sprinkle that into our mixture. So we've just added our cream of tartar, baking soda, and salt. So we're gonna put that on to stir. And um, what we also need to do is put the oven on at 350 to preheat. Typically, I would turn the oven on at the beginning of uh, the preparation of the cookies or cake, whatever you're making. Uh, we do have some rolling to do for the cookies, so that also gives the oven time to warm up. It's also very important, before you even start the project, to gather your ingredients. You'll notice how quick it was when we were able to just put it all together and wash your hands. If you'd like to come and take a look, you'll see how the dough has formed a ball. That means our dough is ready now, because it's made that nice ball. Okay. So we're just going to shut the mixer off and lift this up. And I've just washed my hands. Um, the best to do is soap, water, and 30 seconds. So wash your hands, lather them up good, make sure you do your nail beds, dry your hands, and then you're ready to go. So for these cookies, um, I've prepared some baking sheets. And these are a very old baking sheet made out of stainless steel that my husband made, but they hold the heat good. Um, your cookies don't burn. And then the other trick is parchment paper. So let's talk parchment paper. So um, a problem that people often run into in the kitchen is mixing up parchment paper and wax paper. So wax paper cannot go into an oven, That's parchment right. paper can. So when you are, they feel the same, they look the same, but make sure that you are getting the parchment paper. So I'm just going to use my hands. Um, and as I said, I've just washed them and I'm gonna remove the dough. It's nice and soft and creamy. Kids love to make cookies. It's almost like Play-Doh, if you've ever played with that as a youngster. Kids of all ages, I think, love um, love making cookies because it is such a therapeutic yes, and process. It makes your house smell so good. It does. Mm. So this is our uh, baking cookies with grandma segment, but what are some things that you remember from a childhood when it comes to baking? Did you bake any, at all with your grandparents? Or? Uh, not with my grandparents, they were older, but I grew up in a town called Marathon. And when we moved there, it was um, a brand new town. There was no road in, uh, only a train. So um, if you wanted fresh bread or any kind of baking, the, the families had to make it themselves. So my mom moved there right after the war. Uh, she was a nurse, but she didn't have any cooking skills. But she quickly honed them and she baked bread for our family once a week but it also included cinnamon buns and uh, my mom was Finnish and had a sweet tooth so we always had some yummy treats. So One of the things I remember grandma making that uh, was always a huge hit and treat was her lemon meringue pie. Yes, yeah, she was famous. So you'll see that I've rolled some of the dough into a ball. Now this mixture here is cinnamon and sugar. Okay. So I took a quarter cup of sugar mm -hmm. and one and a half tablespoons, so the bigger spoon of cinnamon, mixed it together. And this is what makes the cookie a snickerdoodle. So you roll the whole thing in the... And how big would you say the diameter of your cookie? About an inch? That's about an inch. Uh, you can make them smaller, but what I do suggest um, when you're making cookies on the cookie tray, make them uniform. So the next tray, we might make them a little smaller. And the reason why you want to make them uniform is so that they bake at the same rate. So if you That's have right. some larger cookies and some smaller cookies, some will be 
not quite cooked and some might be underbaked. So we'll just quickly roll some of these. The dough is a beautiful dough today. And um, the key is um, the butter and sugar and whipping air into that mixture. Because these cookies almost puff up as they bake. They do, they puff up and then they drop. And they're, they're, they're quite airy and light. They're a nice, uh, soft, uh, chewy cookie. Um, you want to really make sure you don't over bake them because then they're hard. And the, the, the joy of these cookies is that they are a nice, soft cookie. My biggest mistake I made when I started baking cookies was to overcook them. Because when you take them out of the oven, they don't look like they're done. So you leave them in till they get a little harder. And what happens is they are like pucks because they, they cook too and much. And so when she says like pucks, she means hockey pucks. And a hockey puck is round and very, very hard and um, yes. kind of like a large cookie or, or, a, or a bun shape. So when she says they're hard as a puck, uh, that's a Canadian hockey reference. Here we are, we're getting ready. We'll get, uh, oh, three or four dozen cookies. And one of the things that um, you do is, that I think is such a sweet thing is you pay it forward and you do a little act of kindness and you pass it along to, um, different people. So sometimes we get a nice little care package with homemade cookies. Sometimes she'll drop it off for past co-workers or friends. And uh, it really, it's a really nice way to spread a little bit of love. And with Valentine's Day um, around the corner, um, it's a nice way to do a budget friendly treat for a lot of people. Yes, I'm glad you added that Jenny because it does make a lot of cookies. Nobody needs to eat this many. Um, but you do bring a great deal of smiles and happiness, and all that comes back to you. Mm -hmm. So I do like to bake about once a week, and I make up packages, and I do share. There's two things we can do at this time. You can put them in the oven, like this, or you can take a glass and push them down. I like them like this. They pop up, and then when they come out of the oven, they kind of drop, so we're ready to Put this in the oven, I'll just wash my hands quickly. We'll trade spots. So you can see the cinnamon and um, sugar coating and the size of the balls. And then this is what the dough looks like. And I do agree that making cookies is really fun, um, texturally, and it's, it's just one of those relaxing, stress-reducing, activities you can do that has a really great yummy outcome. So you'll note that I have the oven on 350 degrees. The, the timer or indicator went off so we know it's reached the temperature and it tells us to cook them for 9 to 11 minutes. I always choose the lowest number first to set the timer so you can check them. Depends on the pan you have, and it depends on your oven as to how quick they cook. So I'm just gonna go to the timer, and I'm gonna set it for nine minutes. And if you don't have a timer on your stove, you could set one on your phone, on your yes. Alexa, on your Google Home. Yep. Um, and one thing to remember is that with baking, it's a, it's a lot more uh, important to preheat your oven until it does get to that target temperature because often we may be rushing a little bit or a bit impatient. And if you put the cookies in at the wrong temperature, um, they won't bake properly. And a lot of the reason is because the butter might, if it's, the butter might melt too quickly or too slowly or the leavening agents won't have a proper time to activate. All very good points. And some cookie recipes, and even this one, You'll get a different result if I would have taken this cookie dough and put it in the fridge for 10 minutes and then rolled it. I would have had a different textured cookie once it's baked. So when a recipe says to chill the dough, um, when you get to the point of having it mixed like this, you would just put some saran wrap, a saran wrap skin over it. So you'd put the saran wrap right onto the dough so it doesn't dry out at all. And then you would chill it in your fridge. 
So our timer went off and I'd set the timer for nine minutes. So let's just take a look. Oh, they've puffed up nicely. Um, I'm just looking at the edges to see if they're browning. They appear to be a little bit harder with the cinnamon. I might give it one more minute. The recipe did call nine to 12 minutes. I just really don't want to over bake them. So we'll just give them one minute and then we'll take them out. So you'll hear that go soon. And then we have our other ones prepared here. So can you bake more than one tray at a time? Um, not in my oven. Uh, an oven like yours, you have a convection oven with several racks, you can. Mine is just a traditional oven and you only want to do one layer at a time to get even baking. And the difference between a traditional oven and a convection oven is that the convection oven circulates the air. Right. So you get a more even bake, that's why you can have some extra trays. So one other trick when you're baking is to spin the pan. Because the back of the oven is always hotter. Sometimes it's always good to just spin it. This has got a silicone cover on it and nicely lined. So what are the basic tools that our students would need to bake if if they were setting up a kitchen? They would need baking pans. Mm -hmm. And when you buy your baking pans, you'll find the lovely Teflon dark pans. They burn easier than the metal ones. So you would, I would use less? I would reduce the heat by 25 degrees. Okay, so if you have a non-stick, like a Wilton's pan or yes. or uh, anything that's non-stick and darker, reduce the heat by 25 degrees. Either reduce the heat by 25 degrees and maybe even lift your rack up. Okay. Because I've burnt a lot of cookies um, with brand new pans. And another tool they would need is probably measuring cups and um, yes, spoons. And, uh, Dollarama is a great place to go. We're just going to set the timer again for nine minutes. So we're going to finish baking off the rest of these cookies. But now that you can see what they look like when they're done. And we'll take another picture shortly because they, they're slightly puffed up. And they will drop and they'll look a little bit cracked but that gives them the lovely chewy texture that you're looking for. So this will change in appearance a little bit. So that's Snickerdoodles with Grandma. So thanks for baking with us today. Oh, my pleasure. I hope to see you again. So here's the cookies. Um, they've cooled now. When they first come out of the oven, they're very soft. So you wanna let them cool right on the pan because if you try and take them off too quick, they break. Um, you don't want real dark bottoms, just nice and golden brown. So you I want the top to look about the same as the bottom? Yes, uh, kind of hard to tell with the cinnamon, but you can see they firmed up now. I had a little cookie monster in the kitchen, so you can see there's a hole here, and she swiped that cookie when it was still warm, so she got caught because it broke. <laughs> <laughs> And but what was the verdict? Was it a good cookie? It was delicious.